We are glad you're with us for another Sunday of giving the week's big stories some context and perspective. We appreciate you joining us either at 9 a.m. or 10.35 p.m. on ABC 24 and also 9.30 on our sister station CW30. So plenty of opportunities to get the real story behind the big stories as we like to say. Let's get started with our topics for today. First is the latest developments in the Memphis mayor's race with just two weeks until early voting begins. We'll also continue our candidate profiles with a look at Van Turner's campaign. We'll also talk about the not so special special session of the state legislature that ended this week. Was there anyone that came out of it looking better than before it started? And downtown dilemmas. While many are excited about a new Tomley Park, will Memphis and May be able to stay? The Chamber of Commerce takes over the international part of Memphis and May. And what are we to make about a judge's decision to stop construction of the Brooks Museum of Art? We have a lot of topics to get to, so we're not going to waste too much time here. We'll uh, introduce my panel, and then we're going to uh, have a biography piece, we'll call it, on Van Turner as we do our Meet the Candidate segment. First, let's start with Tawan Stott Mitchell, who's a political consultant. Thank you for being here. Thanks. We also have Catherine Burgess with a commercial appeal, and our good friend, Otis Sanford, ABC 24 political analyst. Let's watch the story by Zaria Oates first to kind of set the stage. Uh, she's been doing these uh, weekly, and today, or this week, she's profile profiling Van Turner. We have to take young people by the hand and say to that young person, you have an option. With young people at the front of a rising crime issue in Memphis, mayoral candidates are fleshing out their prevention and intervention plans for crime. We have to make sure that our young people are on grade for reading, third, fourth, fifth grade. We do that with extending our community center hours to 24 hours a day. We see all the investments that are going around in the city, whether it's midtown or downtown, but what investments are occurring in South Memphis, North Memphis, and all of these other communities which have just been left out. When a young child is raised in these communities, they give up, they know that there are no options, and we see the behavior that we are all complaining about now. Turner and every other candidate knows the economy and crime are major obstacles the city's next leader needs to address. But he also knows some of the issues the city and county are dealing with come from an area another candidate is very familiar with. We've had those who've been in law enforcement for years and the crime has gotten worse under their leadership. We got a jail that's ranked probably the number one worst jail in the community. Right, that's Van Turner. Uh, Lotus, we'll start with you. Just your, It was a pretty good week for Van because he got some endorsements this week as well. Uh, how do you assess his campaign and, and where it stands now compared to the other, what we call the top six or seven that, based on fundraising and polling, seem to have the best shot? Yeah. Well, he's right in the middle of that. Uh, I wouldn't put him at the top. Um, but Van has been running for mayor, officially and unofficially, longer than anybody. Uh, he started talking about this years ago, and he formally announced as we record the show on 901. He announced on 901 back in 2022, along with Paul Young. Um, I'm, I'm having a little trouble, though, seeing him gaining the kind of traction that I thought he would gain. Um, he is coming across as, and this is no, this is nothing wrong with this, as the civil rights candidate. Uh, in this issue, in this campaign, uh, and I'm just not seeing him broadening his base enough. So, but he's still a player in this campaign, and we'll just see how turnout will affect uh, his candidacy. What do you think about this, Catherine? Yeah, I think it's really interesting how Turner is portraying himself as the most progressive candidate in the race, and he might very well be, um, but I think that does lose some crossover vote. Um, so it's been really interesting just to see that he's been really, really pushing that more than anything else, uh, which could be helpful, but could also go to his detriment. Yeah. You're a backer of Floyd Bonner, and there was a not so subtle dig there at the end of the story Zaria did about we've got people who've been in law enforcement for quite a long time and our crime rate is, is not going up. You know, I think the gamble here is uh, despite Tyree Nichols and everything we've been through in the past year or so, are people, the average voter, more scared of the unnamed criminal, or are they more scared of police? Because Van seems to be, based on the, the things he's saying in debates and what have you, people are more scared of what law enforcement has done. I think, it's, I, I think it's a mixture of both. And that, unfortunately, I think all of these candidates are either arguing a short-term ga uh, uh, gain or long-term. Van is at a heart a social rights activist. 
and I find no fault with that at all. Mm -hmm. He does not have the short-term gain game to talk about what we do to suppress crime so we can work on the long-term issues. And that's what his campaign is missing. And if he had that, he could pull in more um, constituents from different groups, but he's going to be stuck with the long-term constituent who wants to see social justice changes without dealing with what's happening in our lives right Your now. Your point's well taken. I might be very pro, but it's, you know, some, some major changes social justice wise, mm -hmm. uh, but my car was just broken into That's last right. week That's and right. so was my neighbors That's and right. I'm more upset about that. Uh, let's talk about Floyd Bonner too. Uh, he. Uh, had kind of an interesting week. There was a, a group, uh, Decarcerate Memphis, that uh, put on their, their social media page them actually uh, defacing uh, Bonner's campaign headquarters. And in response, uh, Bonner obviously saw some political opportunity there. He sent out a blast email uh, that went out and said that uh, they were clearly supporting one of his opponents uh, and not him, and that we got to do something about these radicals who are not really respecting law and order, so to speak, because obviously Bonner wants to paint himself as that of uh, being the current sheriff. So. It's an interesting dynamic there, right, Otis? Oh, yeah. It's very interesting. Um, the fact that his campaign did say one of my opponents is responsible for this, and he didn't name the opponent, kind of uh, painted everybody with a broad brush there. Yeah, he kind of walked that back. Too. And he walked mm -hmm. that back. Um, but I think overall, uh, this incident helps Bonner because he can say that these are people who want to defund the police, they want to turn all the criminals loose, um, that's not what I stand for. Uh, and to your point that you just made with Tawan, I think there are more voters who care about the criminals than care about what police uh, and sheriff deputies are doing. And so I think this decarcerate uh, Memphis uh, uh, activity that night helped Bonner. We also had this, you and I talked about this, uh, Steve Mulroy, the Shelby County DA, having a crime summit, brought in lots of big big names, elected officials, law enforcement officials, trying to come up with uh, some actual, you know, concrete ways we can fight crime. And you were saying that that's interesting because he's known to back Van Turner. We see it in the commercials all the time. Right. But as the tough on crime uh, position he's taking by having the crime summit, who's he really helping there? I think he's helping Bonner. Bonner was there. Uh, and I don't think Van was there. Uh, and so Bonner gets the benefit of that. Uh, I think the crime summit, even though you may get some criticism of it, uh, I think it was a good thing. You had everybody uh, in the room at least talking about how to work together on it. Catherine, you and I, uh, while I was the moderator for this uh, debate at the Cordova Republican Club this past week, uh, you were there as well. And I wonder if you had the same impressions I did. I thought that uh, Bonner handled himself well in answering some of the questions about the jail and was ready for, for some responses there. I thought Paul Young uh, came across as very uh, dynamic. I was impressed with his de delivery. And Michelle McKissick, what are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought they definitely did very well. I thought uh, Sheriff Bonner could have pushed back a little bit more um, and could have perhaps used um, what happened at his headquarters a little more to his advantage in the debate, uh, just like he did in the email. And it was also interesting that he walked back um, naming one opponent as the person supported by decarcerate. Um, but yeah, it was a very interesting debate. I really enjoyed it. So uh, then there's the candidate who doesn't take part in any debates probably doesn't need to. Uh, enjoys a tremendous name recognition. I'm talking about a former mayor, uh, Willie Harrington, who had five terms as mayor and now wants to uh, be mayor again. And he's taking a little bit of heat, maybe a little bit of pushback for something he uh, said to the Daily Memphian uh, this past week in a profile piece. Uh, we have a quote from it here. Harrington speaks about crime in starkly racial terms, much to the chagrin of some activists. He says black on black crime is the issue facing the city. Harrington also criticizes the state of families and a black community, he says, has declined. What I have seen in the last three decades is a deterioration in the core values that undergirded our resiliency as a people. We no longer, and this is just my opinion, hold in high esteem the resiliency to fight, to be treated equal. I don't think we value education the way we did years ago. People overreacting to this, Tawan, what are your thoughts? It's his opinion, and he owns it. I think that uh, people are concerned about crime, period. 
And sometimes a younger generation, um, my daughter always says, there is no such thing as black on black crime or white on white crime. There is crime. Mm -hmm. And crime is the issue here. And I do think there is a problem in our family structure of, a va of valuing um, respect for self and others and respect for property. I think we saw that with the Carol Johnson situation. And, I, and she spoke so eloquently to that. So I do think he has some merit in what he's saying about um, an erosion of, of a value system for respect for others and self. And I do think he's right about families are not as involved as they once were and need to be. I don't think it's black families or white families or Hispanic families, I think it's a community of families that we need to be speaking to. What is your take? Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what Tuan just said. Uh, it is his opinion. Um, it's something that he's been saying for years. I don't think there was anything new there. Um, if there is any criticism to be made, when he said um, uh, he criticizes the state of families, I think it, it would have come across better if you criticize the causes or the conditions that create these dysfunctions in families. And there are a lot of things, poverty, um, lack of education. Uh, sometimes you just can't blame that family unit for some of the conditions that they are living in. And so I think he could have been a little bit more um, uh, polite uh, in his comments about that. But overall, I, this is Dr. Harrington speaking his mind. And, which is what he does. Which and is what he does. why what I said about Van goes right back to that. Mm -hmm. Van is talking a long-term game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the game he's talking. Right. But we also, as a community, are facing some problems that are in your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 All right, well, I got to end it there. Uh, we'll have more on the mayor's, uh, mayor's uh, situation and the race that's developing here in, in the weeks ahead, of course. But we want to let people know that ABC 24 is sponsoring uh, a debate on September 11th, uh, along with the Tri State Defender. We're going to have six of the major candidates on. Uh, Willie Harrington's the only one who hasn't uh, shown up with the ones that we've invited. And, uh, but it should be interesting. It's a 90 minute debate uh, on the uh, debut night of uh, Monday Night Football, as a matter of fact. And Otis, I know you'll be joining me and asking I'll the questions there. All right, we'll take a break. We'll talk about that special session, that not-so-special session, uh, right after this.